everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic. We're back, but the power's still out. I hope it's back on soon. What is it, Jess? Are you afraid? No. No, not really. Hey, weren't you supposed to tell me what happened to the fanboy? You said that he died. I did tell you what happened. He died. He's dead. Well, how did that happen? Did you not watch the show? Well, you know I only have so much time. Yeah? And then there's the bad language. I, I can't watch it in front of the kids, you know. Okay. And that is to say, well, you know, and I'm busy and I gotta do things and stuff. Oh, just fucking admit it. You don't watch the show because you don't want to. Okay, Corilla, you got me. You know what? Never mind. The fanboy died last year. How do you not remember this? When did it happen? When you were kidnapped? Oh, yeah, that did happen. And replaced by a variant. <laughs> the fuck? Anyway, Raz Holly, roll the flashback! Last year on the Dan Classic Show, it was revealed that Dan Classic's stalwart companion had been kidnapped and replaced by an evil variant as part of the Bad Boy's evil plan to take over the show. Or something. Our hero, Dan Classic, was able to summon the strength to defeat his foe, but the real villain remained safe in his secret lair. Not to be confused with the secret lair of Malt McFog. And I'm coming to you from my secret lair. This isn't your secret lair! It's my goddamn basement! But we digress. Dan Classic called upon his old friend Raz Holly to retrieve his co-host and take care of the fanboy once and for all. Fuck you, fanboy! And that's it! Now wait a minute, how did he die? I just showed you! Raz Holly murdered him by punching him in his stupid fucking fanboy face! Wow, that's fucked up. I know, right? By the time his pizza got there, Rigor Mortis had made his body so stiff, he had less articulation than a Lenard figure! Scary shit, Gorilla. You want scary? How about a company that actually makes decent figures for a good price? That's not so scary. But they let the scalpers run the secondary market unchecked. And when this is brought to their attention, they send out their paid shills to insult the customers. You're not talking about. That's right. Mega. If you listen to some other Dans, you might think NECA is the greatest toy company on the planet. But if you believe what some goosed up pinhead carnival barker has to say, then you deserve what you get. And what you get from NECA might be the runaround if you're looking to pay retail price for nearly anything they make. Sometimes, though, some of the stuff they put out there isn't made in such limited numbers that even scalpers can't scalp at all. And that seemed to have been the case with the Toonie Terrors. Toonie Terrors are a line of figures depicting horror icons in a cartoonish style. I picked up the first two series, so let's check them out. Alright, so it is the Toonie Terrors by NECA um, from 2018 and 19, respectively, I believe. Um, I do have uh, 11 of the 12 figures that came out, um, so let's get to it and take a look at the packaging um, to get started. Let's look at uh, Jason Voorhees here. Um, you, as you can see, the figure is displayed very nicely. Um, we have the, the logo for the Toonie Tourney Terrors. The front is basically the same for each of them. We do see that some of them do come with accessories. Jason has his machete um, here. And then all of the, one thing I like about this, one thing I really, really like about this packaging is that all the legal mumbo jumbo is here on the bottom of the figure. And then that's it. The, the rest of the figure um, you can use for this. They come with a little background. Now, I don't know who exactly is keeping these, you know, pieces of cardboard around to use as display backgrounds, um, but it's a bonus backdrop display. That is how it is how it's listed here. Bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons to your horror collection with these adorable little creeps. 
pick your favorites or collect them all and make every day Toonie Terror time. Um, adorable. All right, so Jason Voorhees uh, to start, and we have the on the marquee uh, the name Jason Voorhees, and uh, behind it, if you can see the Friday the 13th logo uh, behind the head. Um, next is uh, our friend Freddy Krueger, and you have the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, logo behind the head. These are very cartoonish and uh, cool looking, honestly. Uh, he's got the big claws on the hand, doesn't come with an accessory, doesn't necessarily need to, doesn't need a removable hat. Has, I think all of these do come with a little stand, or they might come with a stand, <laughs> so we'll see once we get them open. He has the boiler room on the background. Um, and then we have uh, Michael Myers, because would it be Halloween without fucking Michael Myers? Uh, Halloween 2, uh, rather, as the logo behind his head um, is stating here. I don't know how this fucking licensing thing works. Um, he sees he comes with a jack-o'-lantern with a skull on it and his, uh, his kitchen knife accessory. Next up is our friend Leatherface. Uh, with his chainsaw. Very cool looking cartoon version of Leatherface and the logo for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, 3, or 5, or Rob Zombie Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just Texas Chainsaw Massacre on the back. We have the, uh, the taxidermied or the dried out fucking skulls on the wall uh, of the house there and uh pretty cool all right so and then here's another like it's like we're repeating so many fucking characters in october here's pinhead again um looking pretty good and it is from hellraiser not hellraiser 3 but hellraiser he does have the little puzzle box and on the back um some chains and hooks and various shit um very cool looking figure and we'll see him once we get him out then we have chucky and tiffany as a two-pack so I do count these as two figures, because obviously once you get them out, it's gonna be two figures. Looks like they don't have a stand in there and a dagger between the two. I don't think Tiffany can hold anything. So there you go. And then we got two fucking Pennywise's. Two It's from It, the movie It. Um, let's take a look at the original one. Um, really, I'm not a super fan of the fucking It of the book, the movies, or, or either of uh, anything of that. Um, the only reason that this one is halfway fucking cool is that Pennywise the Clown in the original TV movie was played by Tim Curry. Um, Tim Curry, man, what a great actor, what a beloved actor, and man has he been in some shitty movies, and I count this movie as one of them, but you know what, he did what he could, and he does come with this balloon, and he has the, the look on his face because everything is a fucking meme now. Here's the library. So he can be like, bah, 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 like the fucking thing that everybody loves to fucking talk about on the goddamn internet. Ow! Ah, fucking new Pennywise. Um, he's got this big hydrocephalus head. And he's like fucking little joint smoking hand. His, his red balloon and a little, a little boat um, so he can lure fucking children into the sewers and he has his super fucking scratchy heavy metal it logo in the background because he's dark and fucking gritty he's gritty it he's shitty gritty and so as far as the latest wave is concerned i got two out of the three here is the nun um another one of those movies it's it's kind of in the the universe of the one with the little doll and uh, some other shit, maybe? I don't know. I haven't watched this movie, so I don't know. It's fucking, fucking cool, though. Look at it. Ah, it's fucking the nun. Um, and then finally, um, from Evil Dead 2, uh, <laughs> Dead by Dawn, it is Ash. Um, a very cool must-get figure. This was something I would have got regardless of making videos or anything else. Very dope, comes with a shotgun and the uh, the chainsaw hand accessory. So let's get these fucking figures out of the box and see what they look like on the inside. All 
right, so um, before we move on here, um, you'll notice that they're, they're all still in their little fucking part of a clamshell here because they have fucking little like hook fucking ties that um, that need to be cut or, or somehow disconnected from the back. Um, all the characters are uh, strapped down into their fucking boxes. This does not need... Just design the fucking box so the figure fits in there without jiggling around. You don't need all this extra horse shit and garbage to come with your fucking figure. Um, and, and it just, you know, it just makes a pain in the ass to open it up. And uh, you know what, and, and if you like to display these things in the fucking boxes, it looks like shit because you can see these little fucking things running across their middles and their necks and their legs and shit like that. And, and it doesn't fucking help anything. It's retarded. Learn to fucking, with the money that you fucking charge for these goddamn things, you can fucking design the packaging better. All right, so let's go ahead and start out with uh, Chucky and Tiffany, since they are the hardest to stand up. Um, being as they're very, very small, you can understand that. Um, what these do remind me of with the, the sort of matte uh, paint finish on these things and the, the, the tiny details, they do remind me a lot of McFarlane stuff. Um, things that have points of articulation, but don't necessarily need them. <laughs> like, they look good in about one pose, and then that's that's about it. So there's really no need to have the articulation that's there, what little there is of it. This thing has three points um, on Chucky. Same, about the same on Tiffany. Um, you can move her hand up like, oh my, uh, and then, you know, you can wiggle her smoking hand around and the head turns about yay. But really these are just made to kind of stand up on the shelf or on your desk somewhere. They are very cool looking, very nice looking figures. Uh, NECA doesn't make fucking trash, dude. I'll tell you that much. Um, there's a reason why the secondary market can exploit uh, their figures so much is because NECA makes pretty good stuff. So that is, uh, there's Chucky and Tiffany. All right, next up in here he is uh, for the second time this year. It's Pinhead. Uh, Pinhead with his uh, puzzle box. And uh, remember when I said last time when we saw him that when they make stuff that has gold um, on it, um, sometimes they make it look like cheese. Um, and here we go. Uh, look at this tasty morsel of sharp cheddar. Um, yeah, no shiny stuff here. Um, there's really no gloss paint applications on anything in these figures. Um, they're all matte painted. I think, you know, it's for to give it that cell shaded cartoon look. Um, but I think maybe you could have uh, sacrificed a little bit to get something out of the puzzle box or just a little bit more like there's some little sculpting going on but man dude it's kind of crummy at least he can hold on to it um but yeah like yeah that's kind of disappointing um he doesn't really have pins on his head he, he's more bump head um the points of articulation, three points of articulation. He has a, a flat bottom, which is fine. I would prefer it be like this. A lot of times when you can't really do more than one pose with them, there's no reason for them to give you individual feet at the bottom. It just makes them harder to fucking stand up. At least this thing will stand up very well because look at the size of the base on this thing. Um, and so, yeah, there he is. It's Pinhead. Again, something that will look pretty good on a shelf um, and, and again, Again, next to all these things, it's gonna look great. All right, let's go to the uh, to the its to the shits, if you will. <laughs> fucking these dumb clowns. Um, let's start with the new one, the 2000 fucking 16. 17, 18, when the fuck did this dumb movie come out? Well, anyway, there it is. It's Pennywise, the fucking mutant alien clown that came to Earth to eat children. He comes with a little fucking uh, paper boat that if you remember from the beginning of the movie, it, it floats down into the sewer and then he's like, hey, come on down here. And then like the dumb kid's like, oh really? I'm gonna come down there and look at this fucking monster. Um, the whole point of him being a clown in the first place was that he was supposed to 
like lure children in with something funny and, and friendly. Um, this looks neither because it is dark and gritty. It is like Christopher Nolan fucking created uh, or, or did his own fucking verse on 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 fucking it. I'm I'm not necessarily a fan of the book or either of the movies, so I'm really not the one to talk to. It is a decent looking figure, and it does evoke the the character. It looks like him just fine, like a cartoon version of the Pennywise from the new It movie. Moving the fuck on, here is Pennywise as played by Tim Curry in cartoon form. Um, it looks just like him, and it's it works pretty well. Again, about three points of articulation. These balloons have a little metal wire uh, connected to the plastic balloon, so you can kind of move it around whichever way you want. You wrap it around the wrist. It looks like it gives you the illusion that he's holding it. And it's pretty fucking dope, honestly. Uh, the paint job's good on these. Um, not bad sculpts. The dry paint sometimes, or this matte paint, sorry, um, will... Speaking of movies I haven't fucking seen, it's The Nun! Um, yeah! Yeah, she's got a very, like, fucking wily Coyote <laughs> sort of <laughs> fucking pose to her. She can do the, uh, the Naruto run, as, as you're all familiar with here. Um, again, big wide base on the bottom, uh, no articulation on the legs, don't need it. And uh, you can put her in basically one pose, which is uh, this one. Um, not a bad looking figure, cool cartoonish uh, rendition of, of the nun. Um, again, haven't seen the movie, not sure fucking what's, what's up with it. I mean, you can draw your own fucking conclusions from looking at this as to what it's about. And uh, yeah, pretty cool looking thing. Um, if you're into, into horror stuff or whatever, oh, there's a waist articulation. So you can do backwards legs. Um, so she can turn around and, and uh, so yeah, so there you go. Not too bad, we got a whole other point of articulation besides the head. Um, these are actually on ball joints, I've found, um, but they don't turn, <laughs> but like this, this much, so. Moving on. All right, let's take a look at Ash. He's got his shotgun. This is the only, oh, motherfucker. Like I said, this is the only sort of uh, uh, heroic character in the in the, the line. Um, I mean, I guess you could count uh, Jason Voorhees, maybe. I mean, we can discuss this later on, but let's take a look at Ash. He's got his Ash outfit, his brown pants, his brown shoes, his, his blue shirt, his chainsaw attached to his hand. He has a, uh, a, a fucking quiver back here that he can keep. Or a, or, or a fucking holster that he can keep his shotgun in, his makeshift holster. And um, yeah, pretty fucking cool. He's got a, a point of articulation at the elbow. Lots of different poses you can get out of him. Um, the one thing I noticed about this one, um, the head comes off really fucking easily, <laughs> but it, it is on a ball joint and it pops right back on. So again, this isn't really made to be played with. These are, um, you know, uh, geared toward the adult collector and um, are not bad at all. Nice looking sculpt on the face. Does look like Bruce Campbell. Not hard to make Bruce Campbell look like a cartoon um, with that big chin and the, you know, the sort of exaggerated uh, you know, the, the big eyebrow. Look at this. Look at his face. Fucking great. This is actually a really awesome figure and I would have got it whether or not these things, um, whether, whether or not I was going to do a video or get all these things I would have got this one for sure. All right, and here he is. It's Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's big and he's fatty. He's got a hunchback and a fucking apron and three points of articulation. He can hold his fucking uh, chainsaw and, and pretty much holds it in, in one pose. Um, he has the, the point of articulation there. His head does, I believe, goes all the way around. Not that you'd want it to, but it's a very cool looking figure. Will look cool on a shelf. If you're a big fan of Leatherface and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this is definitely a figure to get. And there he is. It's Freddy Krueger um, in this very cool um, fucking pose right here. Um, 
And he's got some pretty good points of articulation. I think uh, the one, both the wrists move and the two shoulders and the head do move. Um, he does come with a stand because he has very small little feet. Um, and it was very difficult to stand up on his own, but NECA did provide a little stand for you. So you can get a couple of good poses out of him um, with the head movement and stuff like that. He's very fucking cool looking. Um, it looks like Freddy Krueger, an awesome uh, cartoon version of the character. As you can see, they did this sort of cell shading effect on the on the blades on the glove. The glove looks very cool. Um, this isn't the last Freddy Krueger we'll see uh, this month. We've got another one to go, um, and and we'll see him soon. But. Uh, or maybe we've already seen him. I don't know. Don't worry about it. But then again, this is a fucking great figure. Freddy Krueger from the Toonie Terror. All right, and there he is. Jason Voorhees. All the way from fucking uh, New Jersey. Here he is with his big fucking cell-shaded machete. Um, oversized. I thought... They, they they could have done oversizing on the on Freddy Krueger's blades. They are a little oversized, but not as much as I'd like to see. If if you want to exaggerate things, his body to me with the green shirt and the brown pants and the black shoes, he do, he doesn't even look like Shaggy from fucking Scooby Doo a little bit. He's like a big fucking lunkhead Shaggy fucking from Scooby Doo. <laughs> with the Jason Voorhees fucking uh, mask on. Um, very fucking cool looking. Um, the face, or not the, or the mask at least. Very neat. Um, you know, again, another one of my favorite characters. Looks great, will look great on a shelf. And, and, and what more do you need, honestly? Hey, hey, and the legs, the legs fucking move too, so you can do, oh, look at this, oh, you can move his legs. All right, and finally, because it's Halloween, we saved the Halloween guy for last. It is Michael Myers. As Michael Myers <laughs> in, in Halloween with his uh, little kitchen knife. It's got the cell shading on it. He's got the big fucking 1970s collar because he's super fucking disco cool. And uh, he comes with this awesome... Uh, jack-o-lantern with the skull face on it um, can't really hold it or anything I guess you could kind of put it between his hand and his hip he does not have a waist articulation as far as I can tell but his legs do move so if you want to like put him in a chair I guess um, not that you'd want to but hey fucking do whatever you want with these things but he does look very cool if you are a fan of the movies um, and I've said before that Michael Myers can be kind of a plain looking character. He has this white face, he has this all blue outfit, he's just sort of there, he's just like the expression on the mask is just sort of like, oh, oh I'm exhausted, oh, like it's, you know, it can be whatever, but I think they did a good job of uh, evoking the character and making him look kind of scary and kind of cool and cartoonish at the same time. Wasn't so bad now, was it? Well, the figures are pretty cool, but NECA's business practices are terrifying. The fuck was that? Well, I don't know. Do you think it could be a g -g -g ghost? Shut up, Duke.